Okay, so just a few things to note before we get started here um, about the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. This is from an old blog of mine. It doesn't exist anymore, but I'm going to read it to you anyway. Uh, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN is a particle accelerator that collides protons at near light speeds. It is one of the biggest machines in the world, costing $9 billion. It's buried 575 feet underground and runs in a 17-mile circle. The collider is composed of over 9,000 super magnets with a graphic gravitational pull greater than Earth and can purportedly exceed temperatures hotter than the sun according to scientists at CERN. Aside from magnets, the collider is also composed of coils, strands, filaments, rare metals, and cabling. The LHC is said to have the potential to open up quote, otherworldly doors to another dimension, unquote, according to former director of research and scientific computing, Sergio Bertolucci. Let's get into the show. Listeners and subscribers, thanks for tuning in. So let's go into the world of weird today. I've been covering, like I said, I had my thumb on certain topics for a long time now. I mean, even if you go back to two years ago when I was uploading um, some of these topics I talked about. And now that they're starting to resurface in the mainstream um, in a certain light, I think it's prudent to put out this information. This information isn't new. I mean, this stuff is out there, but unfortunately it's being obfuscated with YouTube search algorithms, how, what they're doing with sweeping everything up in one broad brush with trying to fight racism, hate speech, white nationalism, blah, 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 blah. I've covered, I've covered it, those things before. Um, but let's just enter the world of weird today. Let's just dive down a rabbit hole sit back, hang out. I don't know how long this one's going to be, um, but let's enjoy. All right. So what you're looking at here, and most of you, I wouldn't be surprised if most of you already know, right? This is Shiva. We're looking at um, Shiva. This is the god of destruction. Okay. And it's sitting outside of CERN. Uh, CERN is the same folks responsible for the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. Okay. And I think it's interesting that they have this god of destruction um, outside of this building and uh, let's just take a look at what the Large Hadron Collider looks like, right? It's a particle accelerator. Um, it's huge. It's miles underground. Uh, it, here, this is where it uh, underlays. It's in between France and Switzerland. It's underlaid here. Huge um, circular structure. Okay, it's a particle accelerator. It's a collider. And uh, what I thought was interesting is my wife had me watch this movie, and I've all I've long seen the symbolism of them using this collider. Even some of the scientists talk about some of the esoteric aspects, uh, like parallel di dimensions, mirror dimensions, multiverses, and things like that. So you could imagine to my surprise, and this is a hey, spoil alerts for you guys who haven't seen the movie. Okay, I'm not a, I'm not a big movie buff, but uh, Spider Man Enter the Spider Verse. Spoiler alerts, you've been warned. Um, imagine my surprise when I saw CERN. In Spider-Man Enter the Spider-Verse, this is a PG movie, um, supposedly supposed to be for kids and stuff like that. And it's it's isn't it amazing the amount of soft disclosure we get, the amount of truth disguised as fictitious entertainment. Um, I mean, here it is. This was the uh, this is this is CERN here. This was a hadron collider, and you had you know the big rich man, the kingpin, right, who was responsible for uh, funding and orchestrating a lot of this by using um, scientists, right? And uh, one of the this was responsible for the Spider Verse, for the multiverse, right, for the Spider Man multiverse, where they had uh, all of a sudden all these different Spider Mans came in. Okay, and it was very interesting. I was like, the what? And there's no way. Right. And it, like I said, it's amazing. The truth disguised is fiction. All right. So here we go. It, we saw the <laughs> isn't this interesting. We saw the uh, Shiva. Right. The God of destruction. And he, you, you can't make this stuff up. You know, the, the coincidences, the, the truth that we really get. Uh, this is what we call uh, soft disclosure, truth disguised as fictitious entertainment, propaganda. Uh, this is how they, this is part of the conditioning because movies, music, TV, all of it, um, it's used to coax us into a certain belief. All right. And the thing is, is this has 
strands with reality beyond just what they're doing with the LHC and CERN, right? Because multiverse, have astronomers found evidence of parallel universes, right? To many, these past 12 months seems as if we've already slipped into a parallel universe, but Brexit and Trump are nothing compared to the alternate universes some astronomers are contemplating. Okay, these are mainstream ideologies. And this isn't the only thing. Um, we see it in other pop culture as, uh, as well, right? Uh, with Stranger Things, um, the upside down, parallel universes, universes in which there's these creatures, these beings, um, an alternate reality. That's That tends to be the meme lately, if you notice, with anything, um, it, again, out in pop culture, mo movies, music, television. Uh, I talked about Avengers and Endgame and the Thanos ideology, okay, and how we're getting ready, the, how they're, they're the powers that be, those who stir the drink, they're they're positioning themselves to get ready for an end game, okay? And I think a lot of it has to do with uh, something outside of the human condition, which is what I've been hinting at. But even with Stranger Things, again, something you would consider to be fiction, right, um, is, has, is, has a basis in truth, believe it or not. Okay, so scientists bid to open portals to Stranger Thing parallel universe mirroring real life, okay? And you know these are this is done from multiple news sources and i just put these news sources out here because some most people take you know news as gold i i, I understand most of my listeners and subscribers don't but for people who are just out there bebopping around in mainstream media land and coming over here uh yeah they might be able to appreciate that there is a um a line of truth inside this mainstream media and there's there's other uh articles that cover this stuff right scientists are searching for a mirror universe they could be sitting right in front of you and one of the questions that comes you know with these things are what are the beings on the other side of the veil so to speak right Because that's what we're talking about we're talking about lifting the veil on some of these esoteric subjects parallel universes mirror universes uh multiverses whatever you want to talk about that brings up the question, what is just on the other side of our perceptions, just outside of um, what we're able to perceive, okay? And here they talk about these hadron colliders, right, the particle accelerators. Even in here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, uh, the, the physicists there, they're talking about opening portals to parallel universes and... Um, you know, using this high-tech machinery and sending beams of subatomic particles uh, and all this stuff. But in reality, contacting these beings has been something that humans have been doing for a long time, and it goes back to scrying. Okay, one of the things uh, that were, was used was scrying. And it's it, it, right here we have Wikipedia, right, known by various names, such as seeing or peeping, is the practice of looking into a suitable medium in the hopes of detecting significant messages or visions, okay? The objective might be personal guidance, prophecy, revelation, or inspiration, but down the ages, scrying in various forms has also been a prominent means of divination and fortune-telling. And fortune-telling, we're talking about the crystal ball and everything because one of those suitable mediums is typically something reflective, right? Uh, crystal ball, um, water. Another one of those things that's really effective for scrying is a black mirror okay rosemary ellen guiley she has a book out about it i'm not advocating for this stuff i'm just i'm just letting you know i'm making a point here i'm making some connections uh one of the tools that has long been used to access the other side and those beings um whatever else is over there is, is scrying okay and that was through a black mirror and again when you were talking about multiverses or mirror universes you have to say well what is on the other side of that, okay? And how have we been contacting, well, through channeling and through occult practices such as this, the Black Mirror. And I think it's interesting because one of our devices, our modern day devices, uh, represents a Black Mirror, doesn't it? And I mean, uh, not, just, <laughs> not just this thing, but uh, television screens and you know, computer screens. It's pretty incredible. It's basically that's basically a black mirror. I mean, I think that's hitting the nail on the head. And while there has to be some intention for, for contact, uh, I, I think these devices are serving another purpose. Uh, also, I mean, if you just flip over one of those devices, what does it have? You know, the, the bite out of the fruit, or it goes all the way back to Adam and Eve, I think. And I think that that's uh, really what we're looking at is something within that realm. Because if you just take happen to take a mirror and mirror this image, well, what do you get? This is incredible. Check this out. 
Uh, and I've talked about it before, and so has other uh, other people. This is nothing new. Um, but again, folks out there bebopping around who don't know about it, these are just some of these connections. And, I mean, that's incredible. If you take your phone and put it up um, to a little small rectangle hand mirror, you can get this image. This is just this image mirrored. And I think this right here brings us full circle because when we're asking what's on the other side of the veil, right, uh, what beings are there, uh, no matter what we think they are, angels, demons, uh, aliens from another planet, uh, there's something to that. There's something there. Because if you notice, I think we're going through a conditioning process, okay? And folks have long talked about it before. Even if you look at the question of, you know, ETs and stuff, it's, you know, they come from another planet, another dimension, another aspect of our reality, another time. And the general consensus out there is, it appears to be yes, okay? So, so it's all over the place. But there's no question about there being something there. And even if you throw 50%, 80% of it away, that still leaves a considerable, still leaves something, still leaves something considerable um, there to look at. But the question is always going to remain: What is it, right? What is the stuff that we're looking at? And I think if we go uh, back, and here's the thing: I don't think that they're spending billions of dollars to basically achieve the same effects as a black mirror scrying session. Okay, I think they're trying to do more than just contact whatever's on the other side. And if we're saying, well, what the heck is it? Let's let's just go to the uh, the the source of what we thought was fiction. Uh, <laughs> it can't be nothing good. I mean, right? If you if you if you've seen Stranger Things, uh it's on uh, Netflix, okay? Basically, it was fiery pits of hell opening up. The the dogs of hell were coming out and these demons. It was just this apocalyptic scene, okay? It was, um I, when I saw that, I'm like, what the hell? And nobody's nobody else sees this. Nobody else is making that parallel there. So, if if we're just looking at this tangentially it can't be nothing good right i mean <laughs> look at this you can't you can't make this stuff up the god of destruction all right with the large hadron collider that's some major symbolism there if i've ever seen it i think they're trying to do more than contact uh whatever's over there and uh i think we see soft forms of this entering the public you know but uh Maybe in subsequent episodes, we'll cover the more technical aspects of this. And until then, we're just going to see more more of the same within the realm of the esoteric milieu with things that tend to go, you know, under the radar for the most part, but is already breaching the mainstream. And again, I think they want to bring this context out within a scenario that they can control. Uh, but I, I, we'll, we'll get into more of that in, in subsequent episodes. California Carter, signing off.